Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, evening, morning, night, order works for you. Um, I'm here to talk about the uh, firmware doubling update since the last talk I gave and some thoughts on parallelizing some of the stuff. Arrow keys don't work. There we go. Um, quick upstream uh, status update. Um, when I added firmware doubling, it was mainly to avoid deferred probes, unnecessary deferred probes, and to implement support for sync state. But as I've been working on it, I realized it could be used to parallelize booting or suspend resume. Uh, but for that to be feasible, it means now firmware doubling needs to be pretty thorough about all the dependencies. So I'm trying to kind of like dot the I's and T's here uh, to make sure su parallelize suspend resume or parallelize booting can work. Uh, these are the kind of changes that landed since the last LPC. I won't go into each one of them, but overall idea is debugging is a little better. Uh, hopefully it should be easier now for people to at least report issues, uh, captured a few corner cases. The most important one is there's now a kernel command line to say do asynchronous boot by default for all drivers. So that's the driver async probe command line. So if you can give a star, it means default async, and then you can give a comma and like a deny list say, to say don't do asynchronous probing for these drivers. So by default, you can try to do as much asynchronous prob uh, probing as possible. And then the other one is a change the deferred probe timeout behavior a little bit. It used to be some amount of time, but now it's changed to say uh, do it, like do try deferred probe for X amount of time after the last driver registers. So if you keep registering new drivers by adding new modules, it'll kind of keep extending the timeout because the new drivers you're adding will probably allow some probes to succeed. Um, so that's kind of what it's trying to do. And uh, this kind of allows me to also go and set uh, the default timeout to 10 for config uh, modules and format doubling dot strict equal to one, which basically means treat all the dependencies as mandatory dependencies until the timeout expires and after that, any supplier without a driver is considered an optional dependency. So you let the consumers probe and then if they fail, they fail. If they can succeed, they can. Um, so a bunch of work in progress are to-dos. These things haven't landed, but things I need to resolve or plan to resolve. The biggest headache for firmware doubling is cyclic dependencies. So when I first added, I thought, okay, I'll support a simple cycle. There's not going to be anything crazier. <laughs> Inside it's 2020. Um, when it's a simple cycle, it's like A depends on B, B depends on C, C depends on A, that was handled fine. But turns out um, what's right here is like a real world example of a cycle. These are the kind of cycles we need to deal with in firmware dev link. Um, the right way to handle this, in my opinion, is to not enforce dependencies between A, B, and C, because each of them are dependent on each other and in multiple ways. So for example, A depends on B and B depends on A, but A depends on B through two cycles. But we still want to enforce the ordering between X and A and Y and uh, C. So you want to delay the probe of X until A probes, delay the probe of Y until C probes. So that's something I'm working on. There's a V1 series that I sent out a few weeks back that seems to be working. Caveat some minor uh, bug fixes there. So I need to kind of put them in and send out a V2. I'm also thinking of, okay, once A probes First, can I assume B is the consumer of A? But then that kind of becomes tricky once you do asynchronous probing where both of them could probe at the same time. It kind of becomes hard to figure out which one really is the supplier and consumer. Maybe they're not dependent on each other at all for probing. These things will kind of start becoming important when I try to do asynchronous uh, suspend resume. So I need to kind of figure that out there. You can look at the diagram later about the uh, arrows and dependencies. Um, other improvements in progress, uh, firmware devlink used to depend on the DT nodes having compatible property to figure out what DT node gets converted to a struct device, and it'll try to figure out the dependencies ahead of time. Now it does a little bit more lazily so that you don't have any dependency on the existence of the compatible property. So long story short, it's a bit smarter by doing things lazily. Um, and then it now deals with some corner case where the DT child of a DT node parent would, when it's converted to a struct device, the, the dependency flips, but the child is the supplier of the parent. It's there, so I have to support it. 
doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's there. And the last thing I'm trying to do, it's like a pie in the sky kind of goal, which is in every framework, we have a notion of trying to say, is this like an optional supplier or not? We don't know. So we wait for a timeout, and then after that, we return an error. Until the time more the frameworks return eProbe defer. But it's handled like in four different frameworks and they all call this function called driver def deferred probe check state. Kind of trying to take it out of the frameworks so that this is all done at the core level. So the frameworks can always return an error saying you know dev. But the but the driver code would know, okay, we haven't started allowing optional suppliers. Let's try it a few times. Nothing can probe, then we'll kind of let this probe. So I'm kind of trying to move it out so that it's cleaner on the framework levels. And then by default, all the frameworks get the support instead of them having to add one at a time. Because right now, I think it's in Power Domains Regulator and IMMUs. Other long-standing to-dos for the base reason of why I added firmware link, they're still on my you know radar. One is to add sync state support for devices that get added to struct class. Um, so and those are kind of devices that generally don't probe. You just kind of add them, and the class manager knows what to do. Add managed device link support for class devices. Managed device links are device links that kind of order probing. Today, it allows you to add a class device as a supplier, but class device never probes. So your consumer will never probe. So this is allowed, but I need to kind of fix it so that it's handled correctly. Once that's done, I should be able to make format of link be a little bit more specific about the dependency in terms of granularity. For example, if you have a PIMIC that has like 10 regulators, today format of link will say all the consumers are um, dependent on the PIMIC instead of the actual regulator they depend on. So once I do the first two, I should be able to improve the second one, the last, third one so that the consumers of the regulators are actually connected to the regulators, not to the PIMIC. So next, another thing to do is add sync state support for regulator framework and power domain so that the individual drivers don't need to do anything for it to work correctly. And then I've sent out a path for clock framework and then I kind of forgotten about it. I mean, I know about it, just haven't gotten to it. That's something I need to. Um, and last, uh, the one other known pain point is uh, phi handle DT property. Um, Files are kind of force bound to their driver when an Ethernet device is open, and that kind of messes with firmware dev link because you can't really defer probe at that point. So I need to kind of figure out what to do about it there. But I think I have some ideas on that. And going to the second part of the discussion, parallelization. Um, these are the same kind of pictures I showed last LPC, but the difference is uh, what I'm going to talk about. Synchronous probing, asynchronous probing, mostly serialized. Asynchronous probing, the second one is basically for a static kernel. If you enable driver async probe equal to star, you can get some you know, hundreds of milliseconds of boot savings. I want people to kind of try this and report an issue so that we can try to either make firmware doubling smarter and it captures the dependencies, or we can go mark certain devices as always synchronous because my end goal is to enable asynchronous probing by default for at least all systems with proper firmware doubling support. And then the other thing I talked about last time was parallelized module loading. It needed some user space support. Uh, that support has now been and added to Android 13. So if you set that config, um, Android boot dot load modules parallel equal to one, the init user space of Android 13 will load all the modules in parallel. So that gives you more um, boot time savings. So please give that a shot and report issues with both of these, please. Um, and the thing that I want to discuss the most about is parallel suspend resume because this is the one I know the least about. Uh, my understanding of suspend resume is that it looks like um, drivers need to opt in. And if they opt in, they're allowed to do asynchronous suspend. And then eventually we'll kind of synchronize them based on their consumers and suppliers. Um, so my thought is, should I add a command line that says by default, do asynchronous probing for all the devices? And then because firmware dev link now has device links that ensure you don't try to suspend the supplier before the consumers finish suspending. Should it all just magically work? Hopefully, we'll see. Um, so that's one thing. Um, maybe that'll only work when firmware dev link is on. That's something I could do. 
But then the next question is, do you really want to do asynchronous probing for every single suspend resume? Sometimes just faster let the device run because it's a really small operation. So the next step is, should I start looking at uh, keeping track of how long suspend resume takes and say, if it's more than 250 microseconds, then do asynchronous so that it's worth context switching to another thread and letting it continue. And um, if we do do that, then how do you let drivers to opt out of it? Those are all the kind of topics I want to talk about. Welcome any feedback. Am I going in the completely wrong direction? And that's kind of the last line. Any questions, suggestions, thoughts? I'm surprised. I thought I'll at least get some suggestions. <laughs> I'm really worried about the class stuff. We'll have to talk offline. Can't hear you. I'm really worried about the class stuff. I don't think the class information should be there because class represents how the user space sees interfaces, not how the hardware is designed or interacted with at all. So it should be independent. Should be. Okay. I think there's probably been abuse of class in the past that is probably forcing you to do this because it is tied to hardware. Maybe we need to work on that. Okay. Um, device, uh, I, the only context where class matters to me is in terms of device links. But you can mark any device as a supplier. We still need to make sure you don't get blocked indefinitely if you mark a class device as a supplier. Yeah, that shouldn't be there. Class device shouldn't be a supplier. Well, the regulator is a class device today. Yeah, maybe that's the problem. I think I saw, uh, yeah, Mark Brown is right there. I think we've gone over this before. Okay, right? I got some discussion going. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, it is. Um, I, I didn't have a comment. You were just asking if I was here, and I'm saying I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, minutes left okay this person on the parallel suspend resume stuff what kind of issues are you seeing are you seeing classes of problems that are requiring the opt opt in opt out that you're still worried about or what are the types of things you're seeing um on a pixel 6 just for the whim of it i tried let's do all parallel suspend resume one thing it i didn't fully analyze it to be sure about what i'm saying now but it looked like it took longer if you try to do complete asynchronous suspend resume that's where my question about whether I should base it on how long it takes uh, is coming from. So if people have tried it and noticed, those are the kind of information I'd like to hear. Well, what's the cost benefit versus asynchronous or just letting it run serially? Some suspend I think takes like less than a millisecond. Might not be worth waking up a new thread. And main thing, please try parallelized boot. I want to enable it by default. I don't think we're too far from it. So it's a general request to the community. Any online questions? Cool. If no questions or comments, I'm going to enable online. <laughs> Sorry, asynchronous suspend resume and boot. And if I break it, don't, don't tell me that I didn't give you a chance. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.